Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Ixion, which is a sort of space station city builder survival game. If it helps, the email I was sent about this describes it as Frostpunk in space, which is a yes from me. A huge big slice of yes, thank you very much. So we have ourselves a great big round space station type thing, and we are lost in space, because of course we are. So we have to build things to generate food and power, and we need homes for people, and also we need to survive, because, you know, we're out there in deep space, resources are in relatively short supply. It's not like we can just pop down to the supermarket for a loaf of bread and a box of tea. We have to go and look for those kinds of things. Although we're not just exclusively looking for loaves of bread and boxes of tea, of course. It's very unlikely out in the wilderness of space we're going to find any loaves of bread or boxes of tea. Unless, of course, we happen across some alien civilization that does a roaring trade in loaves of bread and boxes of tea. I have no idea. I guess we'll find out as we play. But, of course, we have to go look for other resources as well as the bread and tea. And, like in Frostpunk, there are difficult decisions to be made along the way about how your space station society will advance. So yeah, it does sound really very, very interesting indeed. And it looks amazing too. As you can see from the menu screen here, it is absolutely gorgeous to look at. From the close-up views of the things inside the station to the outside of the station itself, it looks really, really wonderful. It's very pretty to look at. Now this is the demo of the game, and it is available as part of the Steam Next Fest event, which is on right now. It runs from the 21st to the 20th of February, and and as always, there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description below if you're interested. But anyway, I think it's time we got on with it, isn't it? Let's go and manage ourselves a space station. And here we go. So welcome to the Tycoon Space Station, everybody. And of course, Tycoon is spelt T-I-Q-Q-U-N because we're in the future now and we do things differently, it seems. So here we go. Welcome aboard. And I can very happily confirm that spacebar is pause, which is wonderful stuff. Well done, game. Good job. So there is a very lovely intro sequence where we blast off from Earth and dock here at the space station. And it turns out that we are the administrator of this entire place. And the current plan is to give the ship a bit of a rundown, do a space jump thing over to Proxima Centauri, do some science there, and then come home, which all sounds fine to me. What could possibly go wrong with a lovely, very straightforward plan like that? So what exactly are we looking at? So across the top, it looks like we have all of our resources, and there are quite a lot by the look of it. So we have alloys, we have polymers, we've got electronics, we have hydrogen, ice, food, waste, population, cryonic pods, which sounds very exciting, and of course, obligatory kind of science points. And then we have ourselves some power just here. So available power. And is that bar power as well? Okay, so we have a kind of power total and then power represented as a bar. We have a kind of trust meter, which shows how much people trust us. Then we have hull integrity. Down here, we have kind of some basic kind of stats about the sector of the space station we're looking at. And then of course, we've got our build controls and everything else. However, this is looking inside the space station. So this is sector one. And of course, it's a round space station. It's a kind of big ring kind of thing. So we can unlock different sectors, but we can look around inside now. So this is sector one. This is all we have access to right now, but we can kind of sort of pan around and look at different things. Although it doesn't look very exciting right now, because of course, we haven't unlocked anything else. But so yeah, we can in time, unlock all these different bits and have this great big kind of ring world type thing going on. However, I believe if I press F2, I think it is, I think we can go and look outside as well. So if we press F2, look at that. There we are. That is very pretty. And then we can zoom back in again. I think we can actually have a slightly more detailed look around. Can we not sort of zoom around the place? Yeah, there we go, look. So there we are just kind of floating around in space. And it's really pretty. It's really, really gorgeous to look at. And the music as well. The music is very good. It's really, really good. It suits the whole sort of the whole feel of the game very well indeed. But to get yeah, we're inside there somewhere. I think if we do zoom in, it just takes us straight in. That is wonderful. That is very nice indeed. Okay, so what is going on in sector one? I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. So there's lots of little sort of can we zoom in a little bit? Yeah. There's lots of little sort of are they just piles of junk? They are supplies. Okay. So to collect the available resources, this building needs to be connected with an active stockpile. Okay, so that is, hang on, what was that? That's alloys. Okay, and they are, right, they're presumably not accessible because they're not connected by a road. And that looks like it has a different icon. So that's a food store, is it? Okay, okay, that's fine. Ah, hang on a minute. There's a thing up in the corner. Build a workshop. Okay, that seems like a sensible thing to do. So I guess we go down to building things. Um, okay, we only have two things. We can build a workshop or we can build a small stockpile. 
Okay, so the workshop allows for construction of other buildings inside the tycoon, sending a construction mech to construction sites. Ah, okay, right. So the people don't go and do the building. They kind of have construction machines to go and do that kind of stuff for them. Um, okay, right. So we need to build a workshop for 20 alloys. We don't have 20 alloys. I'm, sure, I'm assuming we've been given this for free or whatever. Um, okay, so let's put this thing... I mean, it looks like they're roads. So I guess at some point we're going to have to connect these roads. Oh, hang on. There's a road construction tool just there. Can we not sort of... Uh, yeah, the, I mean, we might get tutorialed about this, but I feel like we should probably connect these things up a little bit. At least connect up the existing sort of road networks that are already there. There we go. So now how does that get built, however? I'm not entirely sure. Do we need to hang on? Come out of that. Um, if we unpause time... Oh, crikey, hang on a minute. Do the... um. Do the people go and build these? Because there are little people sort of wandering about. There are people pootling about the place. But no, it doesn't look like they're sort of interested in doing any building work. <laughs> these are more just the sort of clerical people. That's HR and professional standards and catering and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, let's get a workshop put together then. Let's put it just here. So it's sort of in the middle. So I imagine, yeah, it looks like it has a kind of road connection thing. Oh, and it goes a lovely green when it's actually ready. Okay, so pop that into place. Um, and then can we swivel around and look at that? Can we kind of go... Okay, I'm not quite mastered the controls yet. Uh, okay, there we go, look. Ah! There's a little tiny sort of robot-y thing, look. Building the, um... Building the roads. Oh, that's very exciting. Hang on, can we zoom in a bit more? Oh, look at that. Oh, there is a person... Ah, there is a person actually in it, I think. I think there is a person operating the big machine. It's not entirely automated. Okay, right, wonderful. So now we have our road network. Albeit a very basic one kind of set up. Again, we still need to connect all these things up. And there's food there as well. I kind of feel like we should probably connect that. Hang on, let's let's follow this sort of tutorial stuff. I'm getting all giddy and excited. There's all new things. Um, build a stockpile. Okay, we can do that. Uh, stores up to 100 units of a single resource. Okay, so let's put that um, and I'm down here. That'll do. In fact, if that's where they're going to get things from, do we not want to put that in the middle, possibly? If we pop that, say... I don't know. Here. Put that right there next to the building thingamajig where the buildy robots are. Um, okay, and set the stockpile to store alloys. Ah, okay, right. So it has to store a different thing. It can't store variety. It has to be sort of told to store one thing. Okay, so store alloys, please. Okay. Collect 40 alloys. So now I assume um, yeah, there's little kind of gathering robots, look. There are little robots that are coming along. Um, I still haven't mastered the whole control thing around here. It's a bit weird. But yeah, so they're sort of driving alloys. Where are they getting those alloys from? They're coming from here. I assume we bought them with us. I'm going to assume that the alloys coming from here are what we bought with us. Because this is where we docked. This is where our spaceship kind of pulled up. So I guess we have got some stuff over there. Uh, okay. So there's five more waiting over there. So they kind of go into and vanish. It's a bit weird. Got 25... That's going to get us up to 30 alloys. Uh, okay, so I guess they now go and just grab these. Do they go and grab those? Do we need to tell them to go and grab those? Uh, resource supply available for collection. Oh, okay. Click that. Ah, we have to sort of say, right, go and grab the stuff. Okay, right, get those two as well. Okay, oh, and I see, is this going to disappear? Is this going to vanish once it's been depleted? There we go. Right, it has vanished out of existence. Okay, that is very good. Uh, and then, yeah, that means that we can free up some room around here. Okay, that's very handy indeed. So they're going to start filling that up. Ah, we have a, an incoming transmission. Okay, right. These can be quite uh, these can be quite lengthy things. Um, because, of course, it's going to you know, sort of uh, playing out the story and such like. Uh, let's see what's going on. So, hello, who is on the phone? Okie doke, right. So, that is Emma Klein. And she is, as you can see down here, the communications and data specialist. So, she came along just to kind of boast about something that she has developed called DLS, which is a data listening system. Apparently, we can't live without it, so she claims. But we don't quite know what it is just yet. So, I imagine at some point, we'll have to build a DLS kind of thing. I know some sort of listening data center or something like that. And also, so she did give us a warning from some sort of medical person that the vol jumps, which I think are kind of, you know, the sort of teleporty space jump type things, uh, they apparently might accelerate dementia-like symptoms. So if we see people acting unexpectedly, we have to send them to an infirmary. So again, at some point, I imagine we are going to be told to build an infirmary. Um, okie doke, right. So what have we got to do now? Resolve the event, communal dining in stockpile. 
Uh, stop past some Ah, okay, right. So there is an event going on. Ah, here we go. Right, so is this the kind of Frostpunk-esque type event? So there is an event available. And um, yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that. Are you the chef? Because you've got a hat on. Is that... No, that's not a chef's hat. That's a mask. <laughs> I thought that was a chef's hat. I honestly thought that was a chef's hat for a second. No, it's like a plastic kind of mask thing that he's put up, isn't it? <laughs> Although it probably could be a chef's hat. You could use it as both. Um, administrator. Tycoon crew members currently have no means of collecting food supplies from storage. Analysis suggests impending crisis due to an influx of hungry crew and subsequent accident rates are predicted to rise by 64.7%. I think this is what the DLS thing is. I think the data listening system is the kind of decision making bit of the game because yeah it's giving us lots of kind of stats and stuff. Um, Nyok Bond's social ecosystem theories suggest that refectories can be used to both ration and distribute food provisions in a stellar habitation setting. A commitment to providing food for the crew would reaffirm your position as a competent administrator. I'm surprised we haven't kind of got this set up already but okay commit to building a refectory. Um, okay, so build a refectory, I guess. There you go. End data listening protocol. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Right, so place down a refectory construction site. Um, okay, do people live anywhere? Are there houses? What's that? Is that like a homeless thing? Homeless population in this sector. Yeah, we haven't got any houses yet. I mean, I'd like to get some houses in. That would be ideal. I'm thinking if we clear this kind of area over here, we could put the refectory over here and then put kind of houses around it. That would make sense, I feel. Can we um can we clear that? Can we get that out of the way? That'd be quite nice. And then could we right, food. Oh, there's all new things. <gasps> Housing. We can get a crew quarters for 15 people. We can build a docking bay to make uh construct mining ships and science ships. Food, there's the refectory. Health, ah, there we go. There's the infirmary and factories. We can build ourselves a tech lab. Okay, this is very exciting. However, however, let's get this done first. And what I'm thinking is, if we build, if we build that, ah, oh, we've kind of, oh, we've maxed out storage. That is unfortunate. Um, okay, okay, right, we're going to have to work around this. I did want to put the food thing on this corner, but we can't. Unless, unless we build ourselves another stockpile. Let's put one over here. Why not? Just pop one just there, and then... Uh, oh, it's in construction. Hang on, yep, so it's got to be kind of put together by the buildy robots. Um, okay, so I assume two and three speed time up. There we go. And now it needs to actually be built, I imagine. Yep, so somebody down there building the thing. We can see it ticking up and up and up. Okay, so then when this is done, we'll set that to store more kind of alloy stuff, and um, yeah, then they can clear this out of the way. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, let's just put it onto super fast speed. Wee, very quick robots there. And down to zero. And that can then be taken down. Okay, that is much better. Okay, right. So now let's build the refectory. And what I'd like is, if we rotate it around, I'd like it to go just there. And then we'll build a road going up possibly like that, just to link that together. There we go. I like that. That makes sense. And there we go. The road is going in as well. So yeah, let's just move time on nice and fast to get this thing put together. So I think that's showing us the resources going in. And then, yeah, we have kind of somebody in this kind of orange thing coming to build it. And there we go. We have ourselves a refectory. And then we need to build ah, another stockpile to store food. Yeah, that, that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Hang on a second. Hang on. Um, and get another stockpile. Can we put that? Oh, we can't put it across there. Do you know what? We'll put that just there, and then that can store food. And it's right next to the refectory. So if the refectory needs to go and get some food, they don't have to go very far at all. But yeah, can we see kind of what's going on in here? If I can figure out exactly how to... <laughs> the controls are a little bit weird because we're moving around kind of the inside of a of a sort of a tube type thing. It's... it's I can't quite... Oh, okay, hang on a minute. I wanted to go and look at what was in there. If I put the cursor there and zoom in... I think... Hang on, hang on. We're going to have to look... Uh, yeah, we can see inside the refectory, I think. I think there are people in there. Okay, never mind. Right, we can't quite see, and I can't work out how the, <laughs> the camera works. Uh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Um, oh, oh, crikey. It's right. Everything's gone a bit weird. Uh, right, zoom out a bit. That thing there needs to store food. And there we go. Right, wonderful. And yeah, look, I think it shows... Is that kind of a sort of a line showing where it uses the stuff from this stockpile? It's right next to it. Ah, 
we have an event. Okay, there you go. Some crew members have no quarters to live in. During human history, unnecessary homelessness has always been an indicator of civilization decay. Don't reproduce humanity's basic mistakes on board the tycoon. I know. I know. We're, we've only just arrived. <laughs> I've arrived here as an administrator, administrator of a space station, and there's nothing ready at all. So, um, yeah, okay, let's sort this out. So, uh, commit to build living spaces for all present crew members within 12 cycles, or refuse there are more pressing resource needs. Uh, yeah, we'll build your houses. It's fine. We'll get that done. Um, and here we go. Right, so hang on. Pause time for a second. Um, here is Eden. So, Eden is the PA of the Tycoon. So, Eden is the sort of the ship's AI, which has a polite, friendly voice. So, I assume at some point it's going to try to kill us. But, um, yeah, so Eden comes along and gives us messages and such like. Um, I have an incoming transmission from Marduk Council member Henry Bargerville. Okay, hang on. Wait a minute there, Henry. Please hold the line. Can we build some uh, some kind of housing first? Because we've just promised to get the housing sorted. Um, ah, yes. I think, I think we can fit a building there and a building there. So that's 15. And that's 30 people housed. So that is, that's 60 people given a house. And if we put one there, that's 75 people given a house. And that is, hang on a minute, uh, that's 90 people. And we only have 85 people currently on board. So that should be enough housing for everybody. We might possibly need to go and um, go and grab some more materials. So let's just stock up on um, on some of these sort of alloy thing, with Bob, some of the metal stuff. Okay, right, so if we unpause time... Are we going to see these things slowly but surely being constructed? I think we are. Okay, this is wonderful. There we go. So, yeah, basics are going in. We've got resource sort of stockpiles. We've got so, you know, construction tools. We've got food. We've got housing. It's all looking very good. Okay, let's go and listen to what Mr. Bargerville has to say. Again, these conversations are quite sort of lengthy. So, I'll listen to it and I should just, you know, praise it after he's finished talking. Okay, so Henri here, not Henry as I call him. So, Mr. Bargerville, um, he's a kind of, you know, philosopher, thinky type person. Um, but yeah, he's told us that we need to do some sort of docking with another ship that's nearby because uh, yeah they're going to give us some food because at the moment we're not providing our own food so they're going to give us some food um so yeah now we need to kind of yeah build ourselves a docking bay and build a cargo ship to go and dock with the other ship that's nearby and a science ship to presumably go and do some lovely science um he finishes with administrator trust in genetic conatus uh, Self-similar space will reveal the pattern. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Bargerville. Henri, I'm, I'm lost and confused. But okay, thank you for chatting with us. But there we go. We've provided enough housing. I mean, it doesn't look like the nicest of housing. I guess, you know, any house is better than no house. They look okay. I mean, I imagine inside they're wonderful. They're kind of houses on a space station. So I bet they've got all sorts of exciting stuff. Um, okay, so we have our sort of communal dining goal to feed people. That's fine. That will just tick up slowly but surely. But yeah, now we need to build ourselves a, a kind of... Oh, no, hang on. Is that, is that a docking bay? Oh, no, there's a docking bay. We don't need to build another docking bay because we have one right here. Okay, so construct a cargo ship. Minus, yeah, cargo ship. So that requires 10 polymer. Okay, can we do that because it's part of, you know, Tutorial Town? Are we allowed to just say, can we have one of those, please? Or is it going to say, hang on a minute, you haven't got any polymers. What are you talking about? Um, or a science ship. That also does require 10 polymers. Hang on, we'll put both of those in. Um, I assume some of these things have polymers. Ah, there we go, look. There, that's got polymers. Okay, so we need to build a road up to that. I quite like the fact that it's not spelling everything out to us. However, where's the... Hang on, it's build, isn't it? There's the road thing. I like the fact that you know, it's left that to for us to work out. Okay, so if we just build a bit across there like that, and just bring that up like that, then bring that through the middle, and then connect that up like that. Bit of a junction over there, but that's okay. Right, so get that done. And then we need another... Um, 10 crew died of starvation in sector one. That can't be a good thing. <laughs> that can't be a good thing. We've got food. Oh, there's polymers there. There's polymers just there. Oh, no. Okay, right. These roads are good and it's fine and we do need to get that. But right now, yeah, maybe. Have we got any food? Right, we haven't got any food. That's probably why people might be sort of starving to death due to a lack of food to eat. Okay, right. Hang on a second. <laughs> hang on. Let's get a stockpile sorted. Um, this is a small stockpile, apparently. Uh, we'll put that there. 
because that's yeah, that's fine. It can go just there. Unpause time. Get that built, please. And then we can just put the polymer straight into there. So here we go. Just somebody come along and build that. Oh no, five crew are dying. <laughs> Is it because we've been jibber-jabbering for too long, possibly? Get this constructed quickly. Eleven crew died. of How many crew have we got left? Fifty-nine people. Oh dear. Okay, right. Uh, this needs a stockpile. If we could hurry up really quickly and build this because everyone's going to starve to death. Uh, right, hang on a minute. Another six crew died. Hang on. Polymers. Get this. Go and do that, please. Then build a thing. Then dock with the spaceship and do it super quick. There you go. Right. The, the polymers are going straight into here. So hopefully we'll have some people left. Another seven crew have died. <laughs> Sorry. They are building the ship, though. Okay, I think it's done. It's going to go out into space. Another ten crew died. Right. We've constructed a cargo ship. Can we go and get some food, please? I don't know how to do this. <laughs> um, configure the cargo ship to retrieve food from the fleet management window. Okay. Where's that? Is that the fleet management window? Yes, it is. It's lit up. Okay. So, cargo ship. Bring back food. <laughs> All of the food. Maximum priority because we're not going to have anybody left at this rate to do any of the jobs. Um... Okay, hopefully they can come back very quickly. If it's going to take a while, we might be in trouble. Work and responsibility. Administrator, reports are being received relating that the Bargeville claim optimization protocols on board the Tycoon uh, they indicate that Tycoon crew members are being overworked. And although Dolos, so they're the kind of big corporation that built the whole thing. Uh, although Dolos employment contracts are designed to provide a high degree of flexibility, it is beginning to take its toll on morale. It will be pragmatic to deploy additional crew members or reduce the number of concurrent active workplaces. I think we should request additional staff because some of ours have kind of died a bit there from a lack of anything to eat. Um, yeah, let's request additional staff <laughs> to see how we get on with that. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, they're currently in overwork. Okay. 20 workers sent by the Urshan Abbey have arrived on board the Tycoon. Five more people have died. We need that food. We desperately, desperately need that food to come in. Yeah, the food is coming in, but it's just going straight out again. Are they bringing food? They're bringing food. Oh, praise be. Look at the amount of food we now have on board. This is wonderful. Can you keep bringing that in, please? Okay, right. This is very good. Um, resolve the moon event. Where's... Where do we go for the moon event? Do we have to go outside? <gasps> do we have to go into space to look at the moon event? Um, okay, hang on. Zoom out. Is that what we need to do? Do we, is the moon, the moon must be out here somewhere. I imagine that's the moon. Um, okay. I don't quite know how we, how do we resolve the moon event then? Um, okay. I don't know where that is. I don't know where the little event thing has popped up for the moon. Um, no, I can't see that. Uh, let's just try and keep people alive for now, shall we? I mean, can we grow our own food? No, we can't. We've not got any kind of food growing stuff quite yet. Okay. I kind of feel like we should try and resolve the moon event. Although I'm not entirely sure where that is. Planetary system map? Ah, oh. Oh, there's all sorts of different things. There's an event over on Mars. Oh, and on Saturn. My goodness me, we get around a bit. Um, Okay, moon event. Uh, moon, abandoned base camp. Summary of intelligence collected from the abandoned base camp. The base is out of commission. Auxiliary systems are operational and may be used to restore power. There is an average probability of finding resources. Okay, waiting for a science ship. Okay, so we have the science ship Einstein. Good name. Um, okay, so do we sort of do we send that to the moon, <laughs> I assume? I don't know. Yes, yeah, so here we go. We can see what's going on. So there's us. That's us in our kind of round floaty spaceship thing. I don't think it's to scale with the Earth. Uh, the moon obviously over here. That's what we're saying in the science ship. And there is the thing that we're getting food from. The Urshanabi, Urshanabi, whatever. That's where we're getting our food from currently. Okay, so is that now travelling? So if we unpause time, can we see our science ship doing its thing? Yes, we can. Ship right. Einstein has arrived at the moon. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, moon abandoned base camp. There it is. Um... Transmission from the Einstein team. We have reached the UN base using the provided coordinates. It is abandoned and depressurized, but the video surveillance system is still functional, awaiting orders. Um, okay, so what do we get here? Exploit the security vulnerability so we can hack in and we might get some science or dismantle the camp and we get some potentially some sort of uh, alloy metal type stuff and some science. 
I would rather sort of hack in. Let's hack in and see if we can figure out what's going on. That might be quite fun. So I assume that takes a little while to happen. I shouldn't have got to do that. Five crew died of starvation. <laughs> we have got food. We do have food on board. Um, oh, okay. I, cycle 42. We're only on cycle 41. The game is predicting that people are going to die already. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, yeah, we need to get some more food. I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that we haven't got enough food. Oh, that thing's filling up, look. That thing is filling up, showing how complete they are. Yeah, we need to get this communal dining goal done and out of the way before everybody you know, starves to death. But um, but yeah, because that will move things on and maybe we can then have like a hydroponics farm or something. Right, get this moon thing done. Let's move time on a bit quicker. There we go. Okay, so what has happened? We hacked the main computer systems as you would have found several relevant research papers and data sets. And we found 40 research. Okay, right now dismantle the camp. Oh, I see. So the first one is optional. Okay. Another crew member died of starvation. There is food now. There is food. I'm a little bit concerned why people are dying. <laughs> why are people dying? Hang on. Can we go back to, can we go back to here? Yeah, there's now, there's loads of food. There's 80 something food. Four crew died of starvation. Why? Why are you dying of starvation? I'm confused. Take the food to them. I'm a bit befuddled. One required to feed 18, no, to feed 10 crew members. Three food required to feed all crew members in the sector per service. We should have plenty of food available. Uh, yeah, we've got 83 food. And it requires one food to feed 10 or three food to feed everybody. Okay, not quite sure what's happening there. Uh, let's also get rid of that thing and we'll top up on some uh, some materials. Let's go all the way down there. Let's get this kind of end bit cleared as well. Okay, right. This is wonderful. Though. I like this. Right, so over to the moon we go. Dismantling this camp. Take that apart. And there we go. Okay, so 30 materials and 40 science points type stuff. Okay, right. More people are dying of starvation. I don't understand game. Um, okay, right. Hang on. We have an incoming transmission. Hello, Eden. Uh, it's from Dollis's head of medicine, Dr... Uh, I guess Dr. Munchie, the brilliantly named Dr. Munchie, has appeared several times. Um, okay, fine. Yeah, Dr. Munchie. We'll have a chat with him and see what he's on about. I imagine he might get us to build an infirmary, possibly, because there is one just there. So maybe he'll say that we should get one of those in. In which case, yes, we will. And hopefully as well we can stop people from you know, dying of starvation. It does seem to imply that we have eight people dying of starvation there. I'm very surprised by this. I am very surprised. There's also a medium supply of food over there. I mean, is there a... Do we want to take that apart? Um, no, it's an active supply. Can we not... But it's kind of got a red... Uh, oh, no, we... Oh, I didn't see that. We could have just used that. We could have used that food just there. That's one of the... Why didn't I realise that earlier? There's a load of food just sat there. <laughs> we don't have to trade with it. It's right there. Oh, dearie me. Okay, right. I could have possibly kept some of our people alive. But never mind. At least we know it's there. And at least we're good for food for a nice long time. Okay, right. Let me go and have a chat with Dr. Munchie and uh, see what he has to say. Okay, so Chappie wants us to build the Vol engine and do some science stuff as well. Okay, look, yeah, no mention of the kind of medicine, you know, the lab, the infirmary place. No mention of that at all. But yeah, he was saying about kind of researching airlocks and other bits and bobs. Um, okay, right. So build a tech lab. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, end discussion. Uh, so where was, where was that? A factory? Yeah, okay, so a tech lab. Ooh, right, that's a, that's a beefy old place, isn't it? Let's maybe tuck that right in the corner. In fact, let's put it down here. Can we tuck that down here? And then can we get a road kind of set up to that like that, going round like that? And then do you know what? We'll sort of fill that in like that as well. Wonderful stuff. Okay, so let's move time on nice and fast. Yeah, the food reserve thing is now full up. It's got 100 food in it. I can't believe I didn't see that. How very, very silly. <laughs> I thought it was a, like a, one of these that we had to build around it. I don't know why I didn't think we just could press the button. Oh, dear. never mind. Never mind. We'll get some more people back at some point. I am sure. I imagine we can request more people or something. Um, okay, here we go. So let's get this thing completed. That looks, that looks very, very exciting. If we try and, oh, hang on a minute. Can I work out how to zoom in? <laughs> no, I can't, I, I can't figure out how to, 
how to do the zooming of stuff. Yeah, you press, oh, it goes in different directions to what I would expect. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go look at the science lab thing when it was being built, but I couldn't work it out. Never mind, there it is. It's got all sorts of wibbly moving bits on it. Very important wibbly bits. Okay, so research the EVA airlock in the tech tree. Ah, tech is now available. Okie doke. Oh my goodness me. The tech tree looks very, very big. Uh, okay. The airlock. EVA airlock. Okay, so we have all these middle things. These are all things that we know about. And the tech lab, I imagine, because we've already built one of those. Um, okay, 30 points. Okay, so get that done. Research that, please. Okay, so that's going to take one and a half cycles. So that's going to slowly tick down. Do we have like a, a meter? Yes, down here. That is very nice. Um, okay, and let's go and grab some more material, shall we? So go and sort of plunder this stockpile here. That would be very nice. And do you know what? Get all the um, get all those polymers as well. Because we might as well. Right, and we've almost researched the EVA airlock. Okay, so now build an EVA airlock. Okay, an EVA airlock. Repairs the hull and can construct exterior structures. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's a bit big. <laughs> right. Um... Hang on a second. We might need to possibly reconfigure some bits of this. Uh, can we get rid of those two things, please? They can go away. Put it onto super fast mode. These two things can be removed from existence. There we go. Does that now help us building the big airlock thingamajig? Can we slot that? Oh, we can put it right there. We just took it into the corner. Let's put it here. It can fit just there. There we go. Right. That's, that's quite a big thing to construct. I imagine that's going to take some time. Let's plunder those resources whilst we're here. Yeah, that's going to take ages. That's going to take a very long time indeed. I kind of feel like we shouldn't have lost all those people. I kind of feel a bit silly that that happened. Never mind. I apologise, people. I've never administered a space station before. I don't know why I'm in this job. <laughs> I applied to be an accountant or something. Um, okay, no, it's fine. I would never apply to be an accountant. Um, okay, so they're working on this. There's all sorts of kind of orange wibbly stuff happening. They're working on it from the bottom up. That's very good. Okay, so that's going to be complete. So that means we can build stuff on the exterior of the space station now. So then we can build the big kind of vol engine thing. Oh, power supply is overloaded. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. We possibly have too many buildings. Um, okay, can we turn something off? Can we turn this off? That does require three power. Yeah, we don't need that stockpile right now. So turn that off, although we are at maximum kind of power capacity. Can we build something that generates power? No. Okay, never mind. Right, so construct the Vol engine by the construction panel in the exterior view. Okay, so now we have to go to the exterior view. And now we have a construction panel for exterior stuff. This is wonderful. Okay, and we want to build... Um, what's all this? Solar panel sets? Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, hang on. We want to build a Vol engine. So, okay. Yes. Build one of those, please. Because I think without it, we can't do much. That is so pretty. Look at that. That is amazing. Okay, hang on. Turn back on manual power switch. Uh, oh, no. Turn, turn back on. We, we've sorted the power out. It's all fine, isn't it? So, okay. Dude, and, oh, hang on a minute. Eden's telling us off. Section 1's power demand has overloaded. Hang on. Has that meant everything's exploded? Um, okay. Turn back on. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Eden, it'd be quiet. It's fine. It's okay. I've sorted the power issue out. We've turned off things we don't need. It's all good. Um, can we do some more science? Can we do a little bit more of this whilst we're here? Or do we need to wait to be told about it? There are different kind of little points above it, like the Tycoon Hull. Look at that. We can research extra bits on the research that we've already got. Oh, that's wonderful stuff. Uh, okay, right. So they've built that thing. Build a section of solar panels. Ah, that might help with the old power issue there. That could be quite handy. Um, okay, so I go back to the exterior and construct some stuff. Um, solar panel set one. I mean, is it just cosmetic? Uh, oh, no. A small one, a medium one, or a large one. I don't think we can do that. Let's do a medium. Have we got... We're pushing it for polymers, I think, with that one. Let's do... Uh, small gives us 25 power for 20 metal and 20 polymers. 
whereas that one gives us 40 power for 70, 70. Let's build, let's build a small one for now. Yes, please. I think we can build quite a lot of solar panels on this place because it looks quite big. <laughs> looks like we have a lot of surfaces to cover. Um, oh, crikey. Hello. Sorry. Hang on a minute. Let me come out of the build thing. Um, okay, what? The different phases of preparation, calibration and verification were successfully completed. You must now start the Vol bonding procedure. Goodness. Dallas protocols now deem you competent to gather resources, knowledge and test colonization routines once you reach Proxima Centauri. Okay, that's exciting stuff. So now we're trusted to go and sort of, you know, zoom about the place and teleport to a different bit of the universe and go and do some science. Okay, and before we do clear off, um, Vanir Dolos, who is the, you know, the big boss man, um, uh, wants to talk to us. Okay, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, okay, I suppose we'd better go and listen to what the, uh, the big boss has to say. Sorry about the power issue, kind of mess it up a bit. Hang on, we can turn that back on now. Yay, there we go. Oh, no. Turn. No, no. Is the solar panel not finished? <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, turn, turn it Turn it back off. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Kind of messed up there. I thought we were sorted. I thought we had um, I thought we had power on the outside, but I assume we've not finished building the solar panels yet. I guess they're, uh, they're not working because we haven't got the power sorted yet. Okay, never mind. Sorry, everybody inside. Um, yeah, let's go and talk to Mr. 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 whatever it's called, Vanir Dolos. I imagine he's here to fire us for, you know, gross incompetence. But okay, let's have a chat with him. Okay, so the big boss man, Mr. Dolos here, looking very dapper indeed, he basically gave us an inspirational speech. He said that mankind needs to develop, and in order to do that, we need to go and explore new galaxies. We need to kind of, you know, spread our wings and leave the Earth behind and, you know, begin a whole new phase of humanity and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, kind of part inspirational speech, part kind of marketing spiel. But uh, yeah, there we go. So our job now is to move our ship into the orbit of the moon and then leave the solar system which is all very exciting indeed and yeah he did say farewell administrator for the few who stand in the light and the many who dwell in the dark you carry the fate of us all however whilst you mention the many who dwell in the dark i don't think we sorted out the solar panels quite right because we haven't got any extra power quite yet so hang on let's pop back outside and just see what we need to do with the solar panels, because I suspect I did not do that right at all. And a construction is in progress. It's just taking a very long time to get that done. Um, yeah, okay, how long does it take? I mean, if we just move time on nice and fast, can we see how long that's taking to get done? Because we could do with it being done really soon. If we're gonna go and do some sort of massive hyperspace jump and go to a different kind of solar system or whatever, it would be, quite useful to have a little bit of extra power here and there but um but no it doesn't seem like we have any extra power coming our way oh no we're lacking we're lacking polymers coming into this um we have got a lot of polymers why are they not bring the polymers out to do that oh okay i thought maybe that's what they were supposed to do yeah they've got the um the metal the alloys in but we've not got the polymers Oh, that's kind of the problem. I don't know why that's an issue, however, because we have got plenty of polymers. We've got loads of them all stored away. There are... Ah, no, it's turned off. The polymer storage is turned off. Hang on a second. Hang on. Right. We need to turn off that storage thing just there. Turn that off down to 57 and then polymer storage back on. Okay, this is fine. <laughs> this is balancing power. It's okay. And there we go. There we go. They are now able to move this stuff over to there and then we can get the whole thing working. Right, so now I go down to here. Look at that. There we go. They're building the solar panels now. So now we should have a bit of extra power. Hooray. <laughs> there we go. We got there in the end. Can you believe that I'm the administrator of this space station? Because I can't. Okay, right. So switch that back on because now we have power and a little bit more power as well to play with. Um, and do you know what? Let's just clear these things out whilst we can. I think there is enough room to clear those out into our storages. So that should be fine. Okay, right. Move the tycoon into the orbit of the moon. Oh, it's like a little poem. Um, okay, how do we do that then? So that is us. So we then go over to the moon. Okay, hang on. Where are we? So we're there. Hang on. Where are we? That's us. Hang on. Do we click that? Ah, there we go. Right, and then click the moon. So initiate tycoon movement. So yes, please. Oh, we get an exciting kind of little cinematic cutscene thing. Oh, it's it's wonderful to look at. Look at that. There we go. 
We're pootling away. We're off to the moon. I'm sure that's what they'd say if it was happening. <laughs> Imagine NASA saying that or whatever it is. And there we go. We see it pootling to the moon. I think we're at the moon. Are we in orbit of the moon? I'm not sure. We're doing some wiggly stuff. I'm not quite sure what we're doing there. Can we bring our ship back? Can we dock our ship back at home? Because I kind of don't want to leave Einstein behind. Um, okay, so the next step is to initiate a vol jump via the button in the planetary system map. I think it's that thing there. Okay, okay. There's a there's a tutorial thing about system jumps. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, incoming transmission. Who wants to talk to us this time? Um, okay, what's this? Dolos have authorised the dispatch of new crew members and food supplies. That is handy. <laughs> it might have been easier had you sort of sent them to us near to the Earth. But, um, okay, hang on. How many people have we now got? Because I kind of feel like we shouldn't press the we're leaving button until the people arrive. Please ensure their suitable accommodation once you re pro reach Proximus and Tori. Right, 34 people. Now up to... Come on, give us some people. Oh, there's a load of food coming in as well. Or is that the food ship? Hang on. Where are people coming in? This is exciting. Uh, there's quite a lot of food coming in, folks. <laughs> hang on. There's There's way too much food. There's so much food. There's 200 food just sitting there. Where are the people? Where are the, where are the people that were promised? Ooh, 100 workers sent by the Urshan Abbey have arrived on the station. Okay, right. There's quite a lot of food there. I think maybe we should build ourselves some more kind of food stockpile type thing in the jigs. Um, okay, let's put them... Hang on, can we just have them up there? Just a couple of them like that. That would be handy. Okay, right. Before we before we decide to jump onto a different kind of uh, a different system, can we please just get our kind of food reserve sorted out? Because that would be quite sensible, I feel. Okay, there we go. That is looking much better. So they've emptied out the kind of food stores that were in our kind of docking bay, and they've left that behind. So we now have ourselves. We've got what ninety three food over there, one hundred food there, eighteen food down here, and one hundred food over here. So yeah, two hundred, almost three hundred food. That is very good. That is very good indeed. We still apparently have 28 people that are a bit hungry. Um, maybe one of those places, one of the refectories, is not enough to actually feed everybody anymore. Maybe we do need a secondary one of those. Do you know what? Let's put one just there and get that constructed right now. That would be really handy. If we could get that done at this exact moment in time and build that, that is more people able to eat more food at one time. Okay, so hopefully that will stop people from starving to death. Because all these people have arrived here. <laughs> Red took this brave new step into an exciting new world. And um, yeah, they might end up starving to death. Okay, do you know what? It's, we've, we've got your know, history is waiting for us right now. And we're, we're giving people sandwiches. So maybe we should just go and do this. Let's go here. Let us initiate a vol jump. Here we go. I've got no idea how this is going to work. Do we have to do anything? I don't know. I like the fact that we could have gone over to Mars and done some stuff if we'd have wanted to. We could have sent the science ship over there to have a look around. But um, okay, right. So Vol Engine. I've pressed the button. Exciting stuff is happening. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> um, is it charging up or something? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it is. Look, a, a blue wibbly line is appearing over it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We, we stand... At the edge of history, everybody. We're about to just tiptoe over the edge of history and actually become history. That was supposed to be inspiring. I don't think it worked very well. Right, here we go. So, almost ticking up. And then we're going to go to a whole new place and we're going to have a look around. Um, yes, it cannot be interrupted. Absolutely. Let us travel to places anew. Let us go to brave new worlds or whatever. And there we are. We're at the edge of the moon. And... Wibbly science fiction is happening, and there's bits that are twiddling around. Oh, there's a thing spinning around very quickly, and okay, that's sort of shutting off. Oh, we're all kind of going all wibbly and phasing. We're phasing. Oh, <laughs> we've, we've, we've sort of folded the universe around us. It looks a little bit like a 1980s computer screen, and we just did some. Oh, 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 okay, right. We're doing sci-fi travel. We're doing weird dimensional sort of theory stuff. That's very pretty to look at. Look at that. That is wonderful. And we're just plowing our way through whatever this kind of weird realm is. And that is our target, I assume. So we're heading to that sun just there. We just folded space around us, I think. 
Okay, here we go. That's a concert. Okay. <laughs> they have concerts on, on Alpha Centauri. No, Proxima Centauri. No, it's people kind of celebrating the fact that we've just done a jump thing. The Earth. Our home. She is unique. Held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution. Beyond raw survival, beyond the safety of comfort, we, humanity, pursue something greater. We have learnt, persevered, shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of science. However, humanity has brought destruction to the earth, polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste of a dying world. But the earth is not to be our grave. A mother does not wish to see her children disappear with her. She wishes to see instead courage in her children to carry on. Dolos carries this courage. We have gone further than any nation, moved faster than any corporation, hand in hand with those who, like us, carry that courage. The Tycoon Station is both an epilogue of these endeavors and a prologue to humanity's next steps. Our Council of Scientists leads the vanguard. They know, as do we all, that the survival of humanity now depends on what we glimpse out there in the dark. That we are masters of our own destiny. That we must go as a species bound together, pushing further into the unknown. We set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found, horizons to explore, and because our very existence depends on it. I give you the stars. I give you the full engine. Oh, okay, I see. It was like a kind of exciting kind of media event type thing. And there we are. And a big blue wibby light. And... We've vanished, and we've, and we've blown up the moon. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. I think the Earth kind of needs the moon in order to sort of function and do stuff. You know, it controls tides and such. Have we just essentially destroyed the Earth? Have we just blown up, well, not blown up the Earth, have we destroyed the Earth by destroying the moon? Ah, that's a bit of a problem. Oh, and that's it. Straight back to the menu screen. Oh, no, game. No, don't leave it there. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to see what was next, game. You've teased us. I want to see what happened when we got to the, the new place, wherever it was. Alpha Proxori, or whatever it was called. What was it called? Proxima Centauri. That was the one. I wanted to see what happened there. Because, of course, there was quite a lot that we didn't really get to see in that. We didn't get to see too much of the kind of science stuff. We probably could have gone and done some of the science stuff. But, of course, we wanted to try and move things on a little bit. But, yeah, we didn't see so much science stuff. We didn't see any of the kind of resource mining kind of sides of things because of course you can build in your docking bays you can build the mining ships and i imagine they can go out and pick up resources once you've exhausted all the ones on the ship itself and i mean yeah there was other bits and bobs that we probably didn't see as well other buildings we didn't build the infirmary after all that we didn't get that in and i'm sure there were other buildings we didn't get in as well oh that's um that's wonderful we are absolutely 100 percent coming back to that because as well as it being really good like an actual really good you know proper sort of city city builder sort of station builder type thing that was really good or well, that was really slick and well put together but um it's got a story it's got a story i want to know what happened i want to know what happened to the moon and what happened to earth and everything and where did we end up because if our ship just did some weird kind of interstellar leapy stuff but happened to go through the moon for a bit of it are we not a bit damaged like, can we come back? Can we come back and help? Is that what we have to do? Or is now the Earth doomed and we know that and then we have to try and you know, start sort of a whole new sort of beginning for humanity somewhere else? I'm intrigued. I want to know more. And of course, it looks gorgeous. It looks amazing. And yeah, we're going to come back to this. Absolutely 100%. This is, uh, this is on the list of things that we have to come back to when it's out there and it's ready. And of course, we might be able to feed our people properly this time as well. Whoops. Yeah, let's, let's not talk about that. I won't put that on my... Um, on my sort of space station administrator cv at any point but uh but yeah that's that was really good 
I really, really enjoyed that. All the good elements of kind of, you know, settlement building and survival stuff are in there. It's got a plot, it looks amazing. It worked really well. I mean, given that that's a demo, that is a very good demo. That is a very, very polished, well put together demo as well. So uh, yeah, that was quite fantastic. And yes, we're going to come back to that as soon as we possibly can in the future when there's more to play. But yeah, that's it for now, because of course we have reached the end of the demo and it's left us on a bit of a cliffhanger that we might be waiting quite a long time to actually resolve. But there we go. There we go. I'm sure it will be worth the wait. Hopefully you did enjoy this. If you did, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard, as well as keeping up to date with Ixion when we come back to it at some point in the future. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. I really hope I don't have to send children down into coal mines or whatever, because I would feel like a terrible person. Hello, robot, and I shall call you Alan. Still some homeless people, still hungry people, still sick people. Okay, if you try and reach London, you will end up frosty and dead. Great big human lollipop.